Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The challenge this month is to make stacked animals by using our two ball dies. We have the original surprise ball pop up. Now that one will flatten down into a five inch square. And then we release the new bitty ball pop up, which is about 20% smaller. And this one will collapse down into a four and a quarter inch square. And when you stack them together, then you get the benefit of having the head of your animal be a little smaller than the body. We also have animal add-ons die sets that make it easy to make the stacked ball animals. You can check out all of our die designs at karenburniston.com. So my idea was to show how you might get creative with the pieces in animal add-ons one to make an additional animal, in this case a raccoon. But then I thought with Halloween being so close, maybe it would also be fun to show how you might make an animal wearing a pumpkin costume. So if you like this idea, I definitely encourage you to try this with different animals so you can use any animal to have them wearing a pumpkin costume. Now you can absolutely substitute another bitty ball for the body, for the pumpkin body of this technique. You could just do bitty bitty, but with the surprise ball, then you get that little difference in size. On this video, I am not going to focus on the basic assembly of either of the balls because there are assembly videos for both of them, as well as last month I showed how to create a double stacked bitty ball chicken. So there's just lots of previous videos that show that basic assembly. What I'd like to focus on in this video is just how to style as the pumpkin costume. So for my two bitty ball halves for the head, the only thing that I haven't put on is a hexagon on the top because I'm going to replace that with my pumpkin hat. And I'm making the pumpkin hat out of another bitty ball that I've die cut out of an orange pumpkin color. I'm going to trim away the little reinforcing triangles because I don't need them. So I'm going to work all the folds around the hexagon. And then for each spoke of this bitty ball, I actually wanna trim it down so that it's just a little hat. Now I decided to use a decorative edger die. The one that I'm using, I took out of our new flip frame pop-up, but really any type of edger die would work for this. If you have a longer die, then you just might have to get creative with how you get that into your die cutting machine so that you're only cutting through one spoke at a time. Since I am going to be gluing this over the top of folds, I would like the folds in my pumpkin hat to be really loose. So I went back and forth on every one of those folds several times so that they're very loose. And then I'm going to coat the entire hat with adhesive, line it up over the top of my bitty ball, and just make sure everything is lined up nicely. That was an older single-sided pattern paper that I just found in my stash. I am noticing the white core in it, so I'm going to brush a little orange ink to cover that up. And then I'll add the decorator hexagon from the bitty ball pop-up to the top as well. Okay, so much easier to add that before I've fully assembled the bitty ball, but now I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to cover that in the video today. I just went through and assembled it in usual fashion. The surprise ball for the bottom I did out of pumpkin colors. If you wanted to just make a raccoon, you would eliminate the pumpkin hat and you would do the body out of the same gray colors. And I am using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. With all of these stacked animals, you have the option to use a brad to attach the head to the body if you would like the head to be able to spin independently of the body. But in my case, I just wanted the head and the body to stay aligned and then I'll spin it in the card using the brad that's at the bottom of the surprise ball. Before I switch to animal add-ons one, I have a few pieces that I needed to cut using the bitty ball set. So that includes the arms, which I've cut out of gray. Then I use the inside parts of the ears out of black and then the circles out of white. One of the decorator trapezoids will work well as the pumpkin stem, but I do think it's a little too wide. So what I've done is I've cut it and then I slide the die over and then run it back through so that I can narrow the piece. The pointy leaf from our Autumn Elements set is just perfect for the pumpkin. I'm going to brush that die with a little bit of ink before running it through my die cutting machine. So then it will press that ink using the die down into the piece and really highlight the veins. For the stem, I just need to create a little bit of a fold under flap so that I can attach it to the top of the hat. So after inking the edges of my stem, I attach the leaf to the stem and then using that little tab I created, I attach the stem to the top of the hat. 
Okay, moving on to the die cutting and assembly using the pieces from Animal Add-ons 1. The first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting an eye-shaped hole out of two of the ear pieces that have been cut out of black cardstock. So I'll have to do that one side at a time so that I can really center that die and make sure that I get that little almond shaped hole out of the center. This is gonna become the mask of the raccoon. So as I place that die over the ear, I'm just looking around the perimeter to make sure that I feel like that's nice and even. Raccoons often have some white tufty fur on the sides of their face, so I'm going to use those pieces in the set that you would normally use to make a fox, and I'm just going to glue those behind the little mask pieces. I'm only using adhesive at the top of the mask so that I'll still be able to slide something between the two layers from underneath to create the rest of the eyes. And remember I cut those centers of the ears out of black earlier using the bitty ball set. So those are what's going to become the eyes. And then I've cut the little white circles out of the bitty ball using white cardstock that had double-sided adhesive on the back so that they would be stickers. For the nose, I'm using the piece that comes out of Animal Add-ons 1 and I've cut it first out of white, but then I've cut it again out of black mirror cardstock and gluing that over the top. And that way it just has a little bit of dimension. Okay, I want to make the lower half of the raccoon's face white, but I only want to use one full trapezoid, and then the other two I would like to round them. So I'm going to use that same die that I used for the side of the face to round out a section of those trapezoids to fit. Now obviously if I had figured out ahead of time which panel was going to be the front face of my raccoon, I could have not put the gray piece on and only put the white. But it's just as easy to use a lightweight white cardstock and just go over the top with it. Then I glue the face to the upper section of the bitty ball and I can have that kind of hang off the edge. That's fine. I just need to make sure it's only attached to one section so that it can still collapse. I die cut the ears and the ear centers, both of them out of gray, and then just inked the ear centers to be a little bit darker. Those ears have a tab that folds under, and that's what's used to glue them onto the animal. The bitty ball pop-up actually includes the smile. I wasn't sure originally I was going to add it, but I decided I wanted it, so I die cut that and glued that on. Those same two dies that create the little tufts of hair work perfectly as claws. So I just trimmed them down so that they would fit up behind the larger end of the arm pieces that come included in the bitty ball. So that's kind of a combination of pieces. So the arms come out of the bitty ball and the little piece I'm using as claws comes out of animal add-ons one. And then the arms just glue onto the sides of the body. The bare ears from the bitty ball work great as feet and I did that same little trick to add the claws. And then those are just going to glue up underneath just making sure that I don't impede the brad. The tail that's in Animal Add-ons 1 will make a perfect raccoon tail. It just needs to have black stripes. So I've cut it out of gray and I've cut it out of black and then I'm just using my scissors to cut the black one into stripes but not cutting all the way through so that they stay a little bit connected. And that's just going to make it easy for me to line up all those stripes onto the gray one because I'm only going to add my adhesive to every other stripe. So by leaving the black one all connected as one piece like that, it just makes it a little easier to get everything lined up. Then I can go in, since only every other one is glued down, I can go in and snip away the extra pieces. So I know I plan to try to fit this in a six by six square. So I'm using my little grid mat to make sure that I choose a location for the tail that stays within my decision to keep everything at six inches. Because how you change it in terms of the angle can make a big difference in how large a card you need to hide the animal. So I just use some temporary tape to just hold it on there until I could check the location. Then I just go in and glue it on permanently. I use the same inking trick to die cut the pumpkin that comes out of the autumn elements. And there is a smaller pumpkin in the Halloween elements that also includes a jack-o'-lantern face. So I'm going to use the face die only to cut that face out of the larger pumpkin. Then I glue the overlay to a solid pumpkin that's cut out of the shiny black mirror cardstock. And that way the jack-o'-lantern's face will be that shiny black. 
Okay, a great idea to have a rag handy where you can wipe off any ink from your dies if you've done any of those inking techniques. And now I'm going to use the pumpkin itself to just cut the top of the trick-or-treat bag. I'm using twine as the handle and I was able to get the two layers apart a little bit in the corner so that I could sandwich the twine in between the layers. If I wasn't able to get those corners apart, I would have just glued the twine to the back. And then to attach it, I'm just using a little bit of glue on the back of an arm to attach the twine handle. And I kind of felt like the eyes didn't look right. The white ones were supposed to be the catch lights in the larger black sections that were supposed to be the eyes, but it just wasn't looking that way. So I decided to cut out of the shiny mirror cardstock the little small circles again and then glue those over the top, but a little bit lower. Okay, and now my finished raccoon dressed up in a pumpkin costume is ready for a card. I am going to make a six by six clear front gatefold card. My cardstock is six inches by 12 inches, and then I have scored from the left hand side four panels each at three quarters of an inch. Then I did the same thing on the right side of the strip. So what that leaves me is a six by six square in the middle. Okay, so I added a strong tape to the two interior panels, but I'm not going to make them sticky yet. First, I'm going to work the folds out on either end, and those are going to be accordion fold back and forth on all four sections. And then the same thing on the other end. So just accordion folding all of the panels. And then what I'm going to use the tape for is to attach the clear panels into that little valley. So I've cut two panels of clear material that are each three inches by six inches. And then I just need to get those into that tape on either side. And then the other piece of tape is to be able to fold over the other section and onto the top of the clear panel. And then I can just use glue to seal up the little panels on the back. So on either side of the card, there's going to be two little sections like this that should just be glued together. Okay, so there is the structure of my card, which is a clear front six by six gatefold card. I added my pattern paper inside the card and now I'm trying to figure out where do I need to put the hole for the brad. So my favorite way to do that is to put the flattened animal inside the card where everything fits, then just hover the die over the top and then you can use that as a stencil or a template to figure out where the hole for the brad needs to go. So then after piercing a hole where my mark was, then I just open up the brad prongs on the bottom of the animal and open them up on the back of the card. And now I have the raccoon placed inside the card. You can see it's not perfectly centered because of the tail. The tail is what's making it need to be a little bit further to the left. Okay, so since my hexagon at the top of my animal is mostly on the left side, then that's the side that I'm going to build the bead closure. So I'm going to start with the same hexagon shape, and I've coated that with double-sided adhesive on the back so that it'll stick to the acetate. I just want to make sure it doesn't stick to the right side. Okay, I went stash diving. I found a plastic bead. I found a long orange brad. Those are going to be perfect for the left side of my card. So I've pierced a hole down through that hexagon and through the acetate. And I'm gonna make that a little bigger to make it easier to put that brad through. The bead is acting just as a spacer. So if you didn't have a bead that you could fit a brad through, just stack up a few washers made out of paper. Okay, now the brad prongs are open up on the inside of the hexagon. And then what I'm going to do to make that all pretty is just add the white hexagon to the inside of the card so that it's lined up perfectly and it covers the brad prongs. Now I chose white because that's gonna be a great place for me to be able to sign the card. Okay, then I tied a loop in this silver elastic and you can see that the loop itself is about six inches long. So you would need double that plus enough for a knot. So I'm gonna say maybe 13, 14 inches to start. And then what this is going to be is going to hook over the top of that bead, the knot is, to keep the card closed. And then what I'm going to do with the other end is just get it around my brad prongs on the back of the card. Then I'm just going to add another panel of cardstock to the back of the card and that will both strengthen it, it will keep the elastic from coming out, it will cover the brad prongs. 
So this type of bead and elastic closure works well if you don't care about how thick the card is, because obviously that bead is pretty thick. If you do care about that, then just use a belly band or some magnets. I like with clear front cards that the inside is the outside decoration as well, so the only thing I had to add was a greeting. I chose Happy Halloween out of our Halloween Charms die set. The oval that's behind it is from our crosshatch ovals. So definitely be thinking about other animals that could wear this same little pumpkin costume. I chose to make mine a raccoon because they kind of have a built-in mask, so that really lent itself well to a Halloween card. But again, you could swap out and make any of the animals wear the pumpkin costume. Or, alternatively, you could just make the raccoon with a gray body. It doesn't have to wear a costume at all. You'll find supply links in the description box below this YouTube video, as well as a link to the blog post, which is where you get to find all of the other animal creations by our very talented international design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.